wake up and be awake, be aware, and become a Buddha. <laughs> this uh, word, the word Buddha, it is it's very, very old. It goes back to the history, ma maybe about 4,000 years ago. The first time that someone had used it, I will tell you how did he use it. He said, listen to what I tell you with your physical ears. Whatever you hear, consult with your enlightened mind and then, upon your wisdom, you become a Buddha and choose your path between the progressive and the positive one or the destructive and the negative one. Become first, become Buddha and then choose your path. This goes one of the sounds of Saratusha. It goes more than at least 4,000 years ago. I will tell you the story of myself. Uh, the MC, I didn't get your name, James? Jason. Jason. I, I got, but I, rem I forgot. Um, I just, uh, it is amazing that at this age I started to do a research. But first, Jason has, uh, has asked me to introduce myself. I can introduce myself as a child of this world and a drop in the ocean of existence. I am a mother, I'm a grandmother. I'm trying to be a good wife and a good housewife, which I was not successful <laughs> to be a good housewife. And I am the mother and the creator of Ramin. Ramin and as Aram, you, you are there is maybe some familiar with the word. It means peace, serenity, and at the same time, it means happiness. And I am the creator and the mother of Nirvana. This is how I can introduce myself. My son's name is Ramin, and my daughter's name is Nirvana. But I'm the wife mm -hmm. of Bahman, who is here. <coughs> Bahman or Wakumana, means enlightened mind and I am the grandmother of Asha which is a part of Buddha's name Sit Artha Artha or Asha is the same word so I'm the grandmother of Asha as well I tell you the story of my life at this time what I am doing I thought that um, he wanted some more information about me. I said, as Buddha said, I will introduce myself with my action, with my words, with what I have to share with you. It doesn't matter how old am I or where do I come from or whatever it is. But I started to my journey to see whether I can uh, uh, have an answer to this all chaos in the world and all bloodshed and war. I started a research to, on uh, inner peace and international peace. <coughs> I wanted to see, as a psychologist, they, uh, that I worked with many people through more than 40 years, I wanted to see whether everyone is in seek of peace and harmony with self. Is that, is that possible? P inner peace is achievable? Plus, I wanted to see whether uh, international peace is achievable. I started um, at Sydney University. I went to university and I started to my research. But when I went to the, to see what is peace and how can be achieved, I had to go through all the wars in the world. Amazingly, I found something. My founding, I want to see whether you can guess what was the real founding. What is in this world that there is everywhere war and bloodshed? Why? Through the history there were between the tribes, between the countries, between the nations, between different religions, why it was bloodshed? And we still, we witness it. 
amazingly, the answer is the roots of all war doesn't matter <coughs> modern, doesn't matter tribal, doesn't matter 4,000 4, years ago, 4 years ago, or 4 days ago. The roots are in religion. Then I, found, I went to and I studied all the religions. I wanted to see what is that. And then I found the effect of religion, though it seems it has come for the betterment of life, but it has created more bloodshed than anything else in the world. The first effect of religion is the separation. It will separate me from you. I had a, I had a conference, there were about 2,000 present, and then I had a picture of a little, I told uh, it, it was a girl. You couldn't say the mother was from Turkey, the father were, was from Eastern uh, Asia. You couldn't say it was a boy or a girl. You couldn't say it was black, yellow, or white. You couldn't say any, you couldn't find any gender. Six months old, naked, I had a um, necklace around the neck. All the signs of the religion, from Om, in Hinduism, Buddha, um, Islam, uh, um, Judaism, Christianity, whatever you think, I had a necklace. And I put around the neck of this baby, and I had some film and slide. When I was talking to the audience, and I said, look at this picture, if it is the sign on the neck, this baby that you don't know even if it is a boy or a girl, you don't know where that it comes from. <coughs> if the sign, it is the sign that you have with your religion and belief, you say, oh, he is from my community. Otherwise, you say, no, it's stranger. From here, it starts the differences and the separation. Now, in terms of those differences, did you have a, a symbol for the Zoroastrian community there? Yes, I want to say actually like Buddha. Buddha now they made his statue as a sign of Buddha, which he never wanted that. He never wanted his body, his face, his pieces of body, the whole or even pieces like bones or anything to be worshipped or to be um, as worship, used as worship. But Zaratusha didn't have anything. If, um, if someone wants to find, they have to put a brain. Because Zaratusha <laughs> believes in the brain. Brain makes, creates your thoughts, your wisdom, your logic, your inner wisdom, your feelings. Your feelings doesn't come from heart. It comes from your brain. If you want to put a, choose a thing, I, I think I have to carry a brain within, within but lately, not more than maybe 85 years in Iran, the Zoroastrian got together and they thought everyone has a sign. So they have chosen a sign, a, a sign which is a man with two wings. <coughs> and they call it Faravahar, but actually that is Assyrian. But we found it in Persepolis. It was the stamp of the kings, of Achaemenian uh, kings. But this is a beautiful, I didn't bring anything because I don't carry with me, but it is a beautiful feature of, you have seen in the many countries, but not with the face of a human being. Now, um, Mibrava, I noticed that it's a man with wings. Um, <laughs> 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 the only reason why it's not a woman with wings. But this is, I told you, even if it's not Iranian, it is made by Assyria. And in the history, we find this um, uh, man with the wings, I didn't say that it is Zoroastrian uh, symbol, but the Zoroastrian, they thought, oh, everyone has a symbol, so we should have some symbol. <laughs> so they have chosen this, which I think it is a nice thing. It shows that human beings, the desire of human beings would like to fly, fly high physically. All of us we want to do that. We take the plane now, but maybe tomorrow we can fly. <laughs> but um, uh, also uh, flying high spiritually. This was the sign that they, they have chosen. I don't know, accidentally some people, they said we should have a sign, they put it here. <laughs> Maybe it could have been something else, but I actually Zaratustra doesn't have. That is why archaeologically, it is also very difficult to find how far and where Zoroastrian lived. 
because they didn't have a sort of temple for many, 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 many centuries. They didn't have burial as well. Many places they did not uh, burn even the, the bodies. They put it in a place uh, in the, um, under the, we say under the sun, so they share the body with the animals and the birds as well. So we don't have any sign. As Zaratusha, like Buddha, they never had a sign. But um, I was just going to the religion and then my thesis. Then I found uh, the, the, I make it short because I don't have much time. Because um, then I found something. Many people, they said, uh, human beings need to have a religion. Or Edward Bird uh, said that human beings are religious animals or religious beings. So something like this, it has become so strongly embedded in the mind of everyone that everyone should have a religion. But then I found what is that? And that is the religion, because religions, they claim that they bring morality into the society. They have the commandments, they have one, ten, hundreds of commandments, and they say if you do this, obey this, you will be rewarded. If you don't do it, then you will be punished. Listen, even the reward and punishment, it is not in this life, in many religions, especially thematic religions. So it is the reward after this life. It's something promised that no one can prove or the mind of, at the moment, our limited mind cannot foresee what will happen later on. But then I didn't agree with um, Edward Burke that human beings are religious animals or religious beings. I thought, if the uh, morality is coming through the religion, and if the morality comes from the God, the God, especially in Semitic religions, is one, why is that so much differences? Why is the reason that there is so much hatred, enmity, because of the religion? Even between one religion, different castes, why is there so much um, bloodshed? Then I found Burke and many others, many other scholars are very wrong. Human beings are not religious animals. Human beings are ethical animals. And this ethic does not come from the God or from any power. The these ethics, it's a cosmic ethics. Everyone can conceive it. So the ethics that it comes to me, I can call it, I made it cosmic ethics or universal ethics. We can see it, we can observe it. <coughs> Any thinking being, whether women or men, can conceive it. We can see the order between the sun and the stars stars, moon, earth. Even on the, on the earth we can see in the nature before the human being destroyed it. Even between the cells of our body there is a law. There is a universal law of harmony, balance, justice, happiness, beauty. Listen, even if a, all the tree dies naturally there are a lot of seeds around and they will shoot up. And no one feels sorry. But if your neighbor cuts a big tree, you will feel now that there is awareness, you will feel sorry. You are harming the earth. But in nature, there is no sorrow. We can cut the trees and make this beautiful furniture. But then we have to plant it. We have to bring the balance back. I found in the history that there were maybe few, but two very distinct, distinctive men that they were talking about cosmic ethics, which everyone can agree with. Everyone can conceive it, 
and there is no, no difference between your belief and my belief if we see that uh, ethical um, law over there. The harmony, how can it come? How can we break the harmony? How can the imbalance it comes through? And so on. So I call and I went through and see what, where is it that it didn't create so many wars and why it was so. I found the first one, the oldest, as you said, Zaratustra. Zaratustra's belief is based on this cosmic and universal ethics. He says in everything, this uh, harmony, which he calls it Asha, or Artha, Siddhartha, when this Artha exists, that is good. We shouldn't corrupt this uh, harmony, this law of Asha and uh, harmony. Wherever we see it has been corrupted, like the trees have been cut, then we have to plant it. And uh, the other thing is, our purpose is to make even this harmony better to the betterment and perfection of Asha, because whatever is good, it can be better always. So there's a dynamism in his uh, philosophy and teaching. And the other person is Buddha. Buddha, Buddha doesn't believe in gods uh, so far. It doesn't believe any power it believes the power is within us. We can make the choice. And of course, I'm sure that all of you, you know that there are eight uh, noble principles in Buddha based on other four uh, noble principles. And um, I'm not going to the details, but I would like to really just talk about it later on. But I found this some similarity between these two great men. As I mentioned, we, they don't believe in God as personified as symmetric religion. So the power is within us. The second thing is the um, law of cause and effect. Whatever you do, it comes back to you. Maybe in different concepts. Buddha talks about karma. But Zaratustra definitely says very clearly, happiness is for those who create happiness for others. <coughs> enlightenment is for those who create enlightenment for others. Whatever you give, it comes, it comes back. And one other thing which is very similar in, in to this um, uh, school of uh, thoughts, it's very simple, it can be applied in daily life, it's for the life and the path today, it is applicable, it is not something that it is not possible. It is possible in this life. But there are differences. One of the um, problems that Buddhism experiences is the role of women in Buddhism, particularly historically. Yeah. Um, have there been any difficulties um, in Zoroastrianism? Exactly. I'll finish this part, and then I go. The differences between Buddha and Zarathustra. Oh, in particular, the way that women have okay. experienced history. Sure, I will tell, I will tell everyone. Um, in the story. The difference, well. yes. The difference is Zaratustra thinks the essence of life is happiness. But Buddha thinks birth is pain, <laughs> life is pain, <laughs> old age is pain. I don't feel any pain in my age, in my situation, or whatever we see it is pain. The essence of life for Zaratustra is happiness. And the other thing is Zaratustra believes there is a purpose of my life in this world. And the world is to make fresh cat. Fresh in English, it remains for the, this world, it was 4,000 years old. It meant you do fresh. You rejuvenate yourself all the time. So you don't feel pain if you rejuvenate yourself by education, by freshen yourself, um, you, you rejuvenate the society, your family, you rejuvenate the nature, and the life will go out towards perfection. If we may uh, always rejuvenate and fresh, everything fresh, 
it, the, the life goes on without any, any interruption. But you said um, about women. Zarathustra talks to his audience as Buddha talks, as Siddhartha talks to the audience. He said, men and women, each one of you make your own choice. There is not even one um, place that he emphasizes men over women or women over men. But there is, there is no stories and fables. You wanted to know what, uh, what is my background. I'm a psychologist, and I got my PhD lately. My, my work is here. And, but I want to, to tell you that the main role of the uh, society is in the hand of women, and it has been seen through the songs of Zarathustra. The main thing is the education and development these ethical concepts to, from the childhood, when the, child, the baby, like uh, Olivia, uh, Oliver, is in the hands of the mother, the education should come from there, and the mother has a very important role. But, amazingly, there is one song only he talks to his daughter, the youngest daughter, he said, to, this is for you, Purichesta, which means knowledgeable person, the youngest uh, daughter of Saratusha. There is a man in the path of Asha for you, but you consult with your open mind. Consult and see what is around you, what qualities he has. What I know, I tell you, you can see but then you act upon whatever is your choice, but you use your wisdom. Become Buddha, then make your choice. It's amazing, 4,000 years, my father tells the daughter, you make the choice, because you are responsible. Even today, or a few years ago, when my daughter wants to get married, I wanted to give my opinion, <laughs> but he gave the freedom of choice to her daughter, her younger daughter. We see only maybe, you know, the songs of uh, Zarathustra like, like uh, Buddha, but of course it's much later, it's about 1,200 years bef between these two maybe. But uh, there are a lot of things missing. But what we see, it is the respect of, so it is women and the girl is choosing the husband, or not the husband is choosing the girl. It is about all this. Out of all of the songs of Zarathustra, is there only one um, that is spoken to women and only one that involves women altogether, or are there more? No, it is perfect equality. There is no separation, men or women. It's all of them. But there is one only talking to her daughter. And there is no favor. Of course, if you want to go to legend, whether he had uh, eight <coughs> legs and uh, three heads or something like that, well, there, there is no use and it was not like this, but there is actually not much favor as much as it is for the Buddha, but there is not freely. And that is why for the many years in Iran, we had uh, the, the kings, not the queens, the wife of the kings, but the, the kings, women kings, that they were ruling Iran. It was, we had the admiral, we had the judge, we had the, um, everything. Even during my time, um, which about uh, I left Iran about 30 years ago, 35 years ago, we had six ministers in Iran, women. I'm very happy that nowadays we see a lot of women in politics as well, because this is a balance between left and right, minor, whatever it is, but it was always equality. We have equality of men and women through the centuries before Islam which is about 1,370 years maybe, um, years ago they invaded Iran, and then the face of women went under the veil, the head and brain and everything went, went uh, under the brain, and it is um, uh, something, it's very sad that we see. But I'm not talking about this system, 
I'm talking about the previous one. Well, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, one question is not uh, directly about the question of women, but I, I, I've wanted to ask this for many years for, uh, from someone of the Zoroastrian, familiar with the Zoroastrian tradition, and you're the first person that I've had the chance to ask, so there you go, now I get to ask. Uh, I was reading the Zen of Esther many years ago, and I noticed that one of the things I noticed about there was it had a very kind of touching um, role for dogs in there. And it was the only <coughs> religion I've ever read whose sacred scriptures gave dogs a fair go and was nice <laughs> to dogs and stuff. And I thought, that it's really nice. And I wondered, why is that? What was, what, 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 what was, what was lying behind it? There must have been some cultural reason for it or something like that. Yes, I can say. But first of all, the Sons of Zaratustra is 17 little like poetry that it was chanted with music and the, all together these 17 songs is less than 6,000 words. It means you have written all essays, many of you, and you can read it within half an hour. But Avesta that you are talking, it's the encyclopedia of Iranian Aryan culture through the centuries. Before um, Zaratustra, it, it ta it's talking about um, Hinduism, it's talking about uh, um, Mithraism, it's talking about uh, the medicine, uh, um, astronomy, about many things. Then the Avesta and Avesta is not Zaratustra's sacred book. Okay. But when Islam came to Iran, they kept it aside and they, they said, whatever you have, it belongs to Zaratustra because we are not going to touch it. This has happened, but the sun of that. But the dog was like anything in nature. Yeah. Maybe it was useful in that um, um, setup of living, yeah. which they needed someone to support them, which they migrated from the Middle uh, Asia towards the Caspian Sea, and from northern part, which was uh, frozen at the time, South Russia, they came down. Maybe it was good for prote protection of the animals of themselves, but um, I know it is too many things about dogs, mm -hmm. but not much about the women. Not <laughs> 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 particularly, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Sarah Tushro. <laughs> there is nothing to do with that. No, no, Sarah Tushro doesn't go to any detail. Just it says enlighten your mind. Your destiny is in the hand of your self and your mind and choose, you are free to choose. We have the freedom of choice. We, we, we didn't come into this world, it was not our choice. We, um, the way that my eyes and my nose, that be, it's not my choice. <laughs> but what we have, make, we can make the choice. It is the choosing between the two paths, the good or bad, constructive or destructive. Constructive and destructive can be to ourselves as well. This is our choice. This is the only way that we have, the only time we have to, to make a choice to get married with this gentleman or not. <laughs> and then I have, <laughs> I have to bear the responsibility.